I let you on the second part on Rudy's channel, so let's send him the file. Dear CG thinkers, welcome. This video is the second part. The first part is on the CG Seb channel. He made a tutorial about how to make the container. He sent to me the container, the model, and I made a scene. This tutorial, I will show you how to texture and how to light the scene. The starter file is available for free, as usual. You will find link in description. It's the Rudy's Mess download. I let you grab it and let's go. Grow together. Select the rock and isolate it using the slash key. The object already has a material which we rename for clarity. We use the Ctrl Shift T shortcut from Node Wrangler to automatically set up the base of the material. For information, the texture was found on ambiancecg.com. How do we mix light with the rock? Well, <laughs> the answer is in the question. We need a mix node and an emission node. For color, I often, very often, use a black body node to get natural tones. The next problem concerns distribution, and I suggest using the roughness map, which has beautiful veins. I will rework this image using a map range node. We have the desired effect and you are free to adjust the emission straight as you wish. Let's select the ground and add a layer to it using Materializer. Switch the viewport to render mode and take a step back. I want a metallic ground. For color, I'm using the Materializer Iron node, which you can find in the Pi menu. Um, set the metallic slider to 0 0.9. Now let's add some variation. Uh, go to the end panel, uh, to the grunge section and choose grunge 5. Adjust the texture with the, with the scale of 0 0.1 and roughness between 0 0.2 and 0 0.25. Depending on your computer, you may need to adjust the rendering settings to increase the number of samples to get a better sense of the result. For the wall, it's quite similar. We add a layer and a grunge for. For color, use the code 39, 39, 39. Set the scale to 0 0.25 25 and connect the node to the map variation input of the layer with a value of 1.5. This will vary the brightness of the color by 50%. For the roughness map, we use a grunge 5 with a scale of the 0.1 and a roughness between 0.05 and 0.1. Then just connect it. Let's add some light inside the container. 
To do this, simply select the neon lights inside and add a material that is simply an emission node and a black body node for the color. As the environment is clean with no grunge or damaged edges, we will add some decals to add richness to the model. If you followed my tutorial on the barrel, you should feel familiar with what follows. After editing the two layers and copying and pasting the base color, let's add our decal, a barcode. Use the Ctrl G keys to position the empty roughly. Knowing that I will use several decals, I add a decal mixer that connects to the color input of the layer and the mask input of the mix layers. I make some adjustments to the barcode parameters and then set the emission slider to 1 for a light effect that will bring reflection on the floor. Reflections are always nice, so keep that in mind. Next, we will add a skull right next to it. Take some time afterwards to get something well proportioned and centered. For my part, I make sure that the skull is the same height as the barcode. On the side, we will add some arch marks. Position yourself in the most convenient orientation on the side to position the empty. Uh, I use the color 87, 87, 87. The most attentive will see that there is a problem. Look carefully. The hatch marks are also luminous, and it's clearly not intended. So answer that the emission affects only the first two decals. We combine the shapes with a lightened node that we connect to the emission input of the layer. Last detail, some hatch marks with a little specify. They must be limited uh, in a beveled square to fit the shape. So it's going to be a combination of two decals. The hatch marks, of course, which we position with the G and control keys. and the second element, the beveled square. For its position, we don't care about empty uh, position since we will use the synchronization function to make it use the same empty as the hatch marks. You can see that there is a place for a name, a title at the top of the model. This is a decal that we will put there, but this time using the Cosa Mali image provided, 
with the source files. It's in Latin, uh, meaning the cause of evil. Nothing special here, it's classic, two layers and an image decal. I will let you follow the video and we will meet again for the glass. This is an interesting use case for decals outside of the usual materializer workflow. Start by editing an image decal using the image named uh, text1. For glowing text, we need a mix shader node and an emission node. By using the decals mask output, we get something that looks good at first glance. But upon closer inspection, the text appears to be doubled. This is because the image is on both uh, the outer and inner face of the glass. Here's a trick. Use the geometry node and its back facing output. This way, the emission responds to two conditions the decal mask and being a back facing surface. The effect is really good, and we just need to add the second decal with the image text 2. Use some copy past to make sure the two empties are perfectly aligned in height and size. Back in the material, once again use the decal mixer to join the masks. This node will become an habit. Small change for the rock, change the interpolation mode from linear to smooth tape. Uh, the result is more nuanced uh, with more details. Let's move on the light work. It's a very interesting and too often neglected part. It's the light that sets the mood. Add an area light and position it as I did using the end panel. Power level, I'm on 320 watts and uh, for the color I use the code CCDBFF. We add another area light for a side lighting. I also let you take position and size from the end panel. For the power, 160 watts and a color a little more cyan, 78C8FF. I almost forgot, we remove the lighting by HDRI. This is starting to look good. The following lighting aims to create a reflection on the character, which gives more relief while making the image more readable. Of course, you don't have the character. I'm not allowed to give it to you, but I used an interesting trick that could be useful. 
To avoid the reflection in the wall, I change the spread parameter to 90. The rays come out parallel to the light plan and none of them reach the wall. The final touch of this tutorial. Simply create a plan, snap it to the ground and reduce it size to 8 cm. Add a modifier array set to constant offset and 1 meter on the Y axis. Just like me, don't forget to apply the scale. Blender becomes a hell of mess if your scale is not set to 1. Let's adjust the positioning and create a simple light material. Duplicate the object with the Shift D to position it on the other side. I realized that I could also have used a mirror modifier. Do as you feel like. Here's how to get that special effect called IES light. Add a geometry node and do the dot product between true normal and incoming outputs. The result is sent to a color ramp node and the game is to play with the gradient to get the desired effect. You can do like me but have fun, do what comes to your mind, nothing like that to understand what is going on. The important thing to remember is that it is the alternating black and white that makes the light interesting. Once I'm satisfied with the light, I colorize it to match the rest of the scene, using a mix node and a black body node. I hope you enjoyed this video, I especially love the texturing, lighting and scene making. To be honest, <laughs> more than the modeling. If you started with this video, don't forget to check out the tutorial on the container modeling on Sebastian's channel. I will put the link live on the video. See you next time and don't forget, we get tired of everything except learning. Bye bye.